Okay. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone is doing great. Um, I know you guys are getting ready for uh, your final. Um, so I want to cover some um, topics uh, that are a little hard. Um, and then hopefully, if you guys have any questions, you can always ask me. Um, let's start with uh, signal detection theory. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Whiteboard. Okay. Let me go ahead and um, do the black screen here. Perfect. And uh, let's do yellow. So, um, what we're going to cover today is the signal detection theory. Um, so what is signal detection theory? Signal detection theory is uh, something that is really important uh, because it helped uh, scientists to study how we uh, decide uh, on their uncertain uh, situation that we are not sure uh, whether we saw a signal or we didn't uh, saw the signal, whether we heard the signal uh, and whether we did not hear the signal. Um, and this, is, this was a phenomenon that once um, um, you know, they figured out it, it helped a lot uh, in, terms our, um, in terms of how our internal noise um, play a role. Um, what happens if we increase our criterion or threshold um, and what happens if we decrease it. Uh, so what is signal detection theory uh, is a study of how we perceive stimulus under uh, uncertain uh, situation. Um, so usually when we talk about a signal detection theory, um, we have to draw a chart, which I want you to really get comfortable with this chart because, uh, you know, it could be tricky if you don't really understand it. So it's not about memorizing it, but it's uh, about understanding it because they can change the variables name here and there um, and then uh, really make you confused. Uh, so for this, uh, we're going to use um, S which is signal and N, which is noise or not a single uh, uh, signal. And then we're gonna do yes, meaning yes, I heard the signal uh, and no, um, I didn't hear the signal. So if there is a, so if you are participating in a research and in a hearing research and they give you a headphone and they play you some tone and then ask you um, uh, to hit a button whenever you, uh, you hear a signal uh, or you hear a frequency or, or, or a noise, um, if you heard that signal um, and you say yes, this is going to be called hit. So there was a uh, signal and uh, you were able to correctly um, judge that and say, yes, I heard the signal. But if there is a signal and you accidentally say, uh, no, I didn't, or you don't hear a signal, but they're actually playing a signal, uh, that is going to be a miss. Right? So once again, there is a signal, but you said there's, you didn't hear any signal. So this is going to be a miss. Uh, now, when we're talking about noise uh, in a situation that there is actually no signal, uh, and we think we heard a signal and we say, yes, this is going to be a false alarm. And I'm just going to do, um, it's a little hard for me to write false because I'm using my laptop notepad. False uh, alarm. Okay. And then if there is no signal and you, um, there's no signal and you correctly say, there's no signal, uh, then this is going to be correct rejection. And I'm just going to put our CR for correct rejection. So you rejected something that there wasn't there. So it's correct rejection. So let's go over it one more time. Signal, you say yes, it's hit. Signal, and there, you say no, it's miss. So there was actually a signal and you said no. So you missed the signal. Um, there is uh, no signal or there's noise, sometimes this is called no signal, but usually in psychology or sciences, uh, they call this noise, uh, you know, white noise. There is internal noise, you know, there's no signal uh, that we want to study. So when there's no signal or when there's a noise 
and you say yes, uh, so that you perceive something that is not there. Uh, so this is going to be false alarm. It is false because it's not there. And then once um, there is no signal and you say no, uh, so this is going to be a correct rejection. Okay, usually this chart, you have to study it in a terms of graph, normal distribution. Uh, let's cover that here. So let me choose a different color. Um, let's do light green. So, for a normal distribution, uh, let's say this is zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth, negative one, negative two, and negative three. Okay, uh, so because we are talking about a signal and noise, then obviously we should have two normal distribution. Uh, what do I mean by normal distribution? This kind of graph, right? So this is a normal distribution. Um, and then uh, let's choose another, uh, you know, normal distribution graph, which is going to be right next to it, right? So this is going to be normal dis distribution for our signal S. And this is going to be our normal distribution for noise, no signal, right? Okay. Now, this line right here is our criterion, right? This is our inner threshold. This is something that we go by to determine whether we heard the signal or we didn't hear the signal. You know, we all have different thresholds, different, um, you know, what's the other name? Different biases, you know, uh, when uh, in regards of, you know, uh, hearing a signal or not hearing a signal. Some of us are really conservatives. Some of us are really, uh, you know, liberal. Um, so, and we're going to cover that in this, uh, you know, uh, session. So given two normal distribution, we have a signal, we have, no, uh, we have a noise, and this is our criterion, right? So now if I move, uh, let's, let's, I'm getting ahead of myself. So now the area, let's go step by step. Um, so if you go by area, um, under if you say anything that is uh, any, but you if you choose a signal um, that is um, larger than your criterion and it lands under uh, under this normal distribution so anything under this uh, uh, let me choose let me color code it uh, so anything that you choose uh, underneath this curve which is larger than your criterion then it's going to be hit right let me go ahead and note that. So this is going to be hit. Okay. So again, anything that is larger than your criterion and lands underneath this uh, normal distribution of signal, it's going to be hit. So there was actually a signal and you detect it and it's going to be hit. Anything that is lower than your criterion and lies underneath this graph, underneath, uh, underneath this normal distribution, uh, it's going to be false alarm, uh, correct rejection, my bad. Uh, so anything that is lower than um, your criterion, and um, it's going to be underneath, underneath this um, uh, you know, normal distribution of noise or no signal, uh, it's correct rejection. So there is actually no noise, and you detect it. So um, let me choose this. So oops. So this is going to be a C R correct rejection. Okay. Uh, what else? So now the tricky part is this, and I want you to really to pay attention here. Uh, these graphs right here, uh, they share area. So some of the signal, um, you know, graph is uh, it's embedded in in a noise signal, and some of the uh, uh, noise you know, normal distribution is embedded in a signal uh, normal distribution, right? This is where it's, it gets a little tricky. So the area, so um, 
let me see, um, how would I explain this that doesn't confuse you too much? Uh, so, so if this is our criterion, then anything that we say, which is larger than our criterion, is gonna be hit, right? But anything that is lower than our criterion and uh, that lands in, um, that lands um, in our, let me see what happened that lands right here, uh, still underneath the uh, signal curve, but it's, it, it's the share area under, under noise, um, it's gonna be um, our misses. Sorry, I received a phone call. Okay, um, so this is gonna be our uh, miss. Right? What does that mean? That means there was actually a signal. It, it is a signal, but because it was lower than our criterion, uh, it, it it's a miss. We didn't call it. Right? So the same thing happens here. Um, so the area underneath this, uh, you know, underneath our uh, noise criterion, which shares a property with uh, with signal, which is higher than our criterion. This is going to be um, a, a false alarm, right? So this is going to be a false, I put F A, false alarm. What does that mean? False alarm. That means there was actually no signal, but you said yes. So this is exactly what that means. So again, Anything that is lower than our criterion, which underneath, which lies underneath the signal, uh, embedded in noise uh, normal distribution, is going to be a miss. Why? Because it's lower than our uh, criterion, then we're not going to detect it because it's lower. Um, so it's miss. So there's actually a signal, and we say no uh, because it's uh, lower than our criterion. Uh, and then if anything that is, you know, we uh, anything that is higher than our criterion. Uh, but actually there is no noise um, or there is uh, no signal, then this is going to be a false alarm. We said something exists that uh, we say yes, because it's larger than our criterion, but there is actually no signal. So hopefully you understood that. Uh, now, um, it comes down to a, a little mathematics that uh, you guys don't have to know a, a lot about it. Uh, but I'm just going to cover the basics uh, that might appear. So the distance, how do we calculate this? So the, we actually, this is, there's a purpose under, under all this, that we calculate this and we, we, we find out what is a person's sensitivity or what is the person's threshold or criterion or biases. So we are able to calculate that. Uh, so we came out and, you know, they said that the distance between our noise signal or uh, our noise distribution and uh, our signal distribution, it's what they call it, it's a D prime. So the distance that uh, we have between our noise and signal, this normal distribution is D prime. Let me do this. D prime, right? And then each of these graphs, each of these normal distribution, we have a sigma, which is a, uh, a standard uh, deviation. So, so we have sigma, we have D prime, which is a sensitivity, um, you know, how far away they are. Um, and we have sigma, uh, which is a normal distribution. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is a standard deviation. So now we can calculate this by giving, but we can calculate the D prime, the sensitivity by, um, so this is the noise, the mean of noise, we call this mu of N. And usually what we calculate, we, we don't calculate every, sing, every single case, so we get an average of it. Uh, so, um, and then mu S, which is the same thing as average of signal and average of uh, no signal or noise. Uh, so the formula is use of N, uh, use of S minus 
news of n, which is noise, divided by the sigma or the standard deviation. And that gives us the sensitivity or the D prime, right? And then um, we also can I calculate this um, on Z. So you guys, for those of you who are a psych major, you guys have to take, I believe, uh, statistics stat uh, 10A, B, and C, and uh, they will cover that in much more detail. Um, the Z score uh, and, you know, they have like special tables and, and so on and so forth, but it's not required for this class. So as long as you just have to know that, um, you know, understand the hits, misses, and where they land on this, uh, on this graph, you should be fine. So D prime, we can also uh, measure them in a sense of Zs, uh, which is Zn, which is a Z of noise minus a Z of this, which is the sigma. Right, and you guys can uh, easily calculate that and understand the D prime and sensitivity. But again, you're not gonna be required to do any math uh, on this test. Now, one last thing that I wanted to cover uh, that is really important. We all have this capacity inside of us um, that we can change our threshold depending on the situation. If we are, you know, this is uh, what your book talked about, that this, you know, internal noise or this threshold that we set, um, you know, it's, we can't change it as, you know, it depends on, your, on our personality, on motivation, on, on stress level and so on and so forth. Um, so we, uh, we are actually able to change this criterion. This is not constant. We can move this criterion, uh, make it larger. Let's say we put it right here, right? This is if we move, if we make it larger, it, we're going to make it more accurate if, if it goes higher. So because we are less tend to say, look at our curve, it's almost divided in half. So we are less tend to say hit, uh, we are more conservatives, if we are more careful. And um, so what happens when we uh, have our criterion in a more conservative sense, uh, our hit uh, percentage goes lower. Now, what happened to the area that is underneath this uh, curve, which are misses, then our misses, it's going to be higher, right? So we tend, because the area right here, uh, the, our, when our criterion was here, we had this little area for our misses. Now, if, I, if my criterion is right here, or my bias is right here, then I have all this area, uh, for misses, so my misses is going to be uh, it's going to be increased, right? So when I have a more conservative threshold, um, I'm I'm going to have fewer hits, I'm going to have more misses, and it also it's going to increase our uh, correct rejection, right? It also increases the stuff that I say, you know, the correct rejection because everything is going to be lower than my uh, threshold or my criterion. Now, what happens? Um, when um, I lower my uh, criterion or m if I lower my threshold, if I move it right here uh, instead of here, what happens to that? This is what we call a liberal uh, criterion. This, we tend to say yes a lot more um, than uh, saying no. So what happens uh, is that with the number of hits, it's going to increase because I tend to say yes a lot. So out of all those yeses, some of them is going to be more of them is going to be underneath this uh, signal curve. Um, and I, I hit, hit, you know, uh, but what happens, it also, our um, false alarm, actually it's going to increase. If my criterion was here, then I had this much to do a uh, false alarm. But now, since I'm gonna decide to say yes more often, then my false alarm uh, is it's, it's gonna increase more. But what, that, what that means is that there's no signal and I keep saying yes. So it has all its pros and cons. And we are actually, based on this information, we are actually able to train our uh, subjects uh, to um, have a threshold that we want. So for example, in a, a hearing test, uh, you know, after a few sessions, 
the, the subjects create this sense uh, of a threshold um, after they get trained. Uh, so it's an important um, uh, you know, phenomenon um, that helps you know, scientists uh, you know, study what happens when someone say, they saw a signal, they didn't see the signal, um, or when they are uncertain. Uh, and they are able to a, study the criterion, whether it's uh, you know, conservatives, whether it's liberal, and so on and so forth. And they are easily calculated uh, with these uh, formulas. Hopefully that was uh, clear. Let me just check to see if I covered everything that I wanted to cover. So um, yeah, we should be good. Um, so if you guys have any questions, any concern, you can always email me and um, um, that's it. I'm done. Take care and I'll see you later.